out there in YouTube land. Welcome back. Today we are going to review one of our favorite vampire movies, which happens to be Fright Night. It's a well-known one. It is, but... We can kind of relate to it because okay. the character is a horror junkie, essentially. Mm -hmm. You know, Charlie Brewster is essentially Tabby and I. You know, we were kind of yeah. nerdy in high school. We weren't yeah. lucky enough to afford a car, though. He had that going for him. He did have that going for him. I and he also know. had the luck of living in a town that actually had a horror host. If yeah. there would have been a horror host living in our hometowns, <laughs> that poor person. <laughs> that poor person would have had two children constantly. <laughs> Bugging them about what movies they're going to review. <laughs> this is what, 1985? Yes. God, a lot of horror came out that was excellent in the 80s and it 90s. It did. People were not afraid to... And I'll put it this way. They weren't afraid of offending anyone. In fact, they wanted to offend people because it brought out an emotional response. It did. And it... horror was hardcore to be offensive, to be graphic, and to yep. also be kind of a morality tale in the 80s. It did all those things, and it, it really... There's nothing like it no. anymore. I mean, you get some good ones every now and again. But now, you know, with the rise of social media and how many people will pile onto something, people aren't as free with their creative ability to say, okay, here's this intense topic that yes. is, like, in the forefront, so let's make a movie about it and get people riled up. Yeah, it... Today is it's a much different arena yes. than it was then. So I think that's why so many really good horror films came out in the 80s, because there was freedom. There was freedom and there was the ability to just... You weren't going to be loved by everybody, but yeah. you certainly made an impression. And, you know, the other cool thing about the 80s and in regards to all that stuff was that... You know, they took, like, a horrible character, and just this is just an example, like, say you have a Nazi mm -hmm. from, like, 1940s, and yet they would pair that person with this supernatural element to come and, like, give them the most horrific death they could think of, which was a kind of a emotive revenge thing that couldn't be accomplished otherwise. Yeah. So there were positive things about this whole thing that was really a neat thing. And, you know, with Fright Night, the thing that they tackled was single motherhood, really. That, yeah. And, and how dangerous it was to be a single mother trying to raise a teenage kid. And it's, you know, it, it brought forward that challenge in a time that it was still very much not kosher or not talked about. A single mom was looked down upon. Yeah. And, frankly, they have a really hard job. Especially yeah. Especially when they have a teenager. Exactly. So, and, like, Charlie's mom was a nurse. And so there was a lot of times that she had to work different shifts. Mm -hmm. And wasn't home for her son. Thank goodness at this time he was a teenager. But even at that, that's where kind of arise some of the problems. That's where the, uh, some of the problems came in. And then enter... Vampires. The vampires. So, you know, it kind of, they showed this good progression mm -hmm. of, well, mom's not home. What is the teenager going to get up to? And unfortunately, in this case, it wasn't just, you know, getting a good time with his girlfriend. It was... <laughs> you kind of hope that was the case. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, instead, the deadly vampire next door tried to kill him all night. But, you, you know... <laughs> man, talk about him. Like, how was your night? Well, the neighbor tried to kill me for about <laughs> 20, you know, so minutes, and then it ended up being the rest of the night, and you know. Yeah, and I sometimes survived. <laughs> How was your weekend? <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, the other cool thing about Fright Night is that the amount of humor that's in it. Yeah. And Tom Holland, who both wrote and directed the film, is known for this quirky humor. He is. And, you know, the fact that he gave the Renfield character this, like, smart-assy attitude. 
really added something to the movie, I thought, because it made it not just the regular old, like, archetype thing where you have, you know, the vampire, and then you have the vampire servant, and da-da-da. No, you have, you have vampire, and then you have, ha-ha, you're a piece of shit. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it, again, you get the 80s, and <laughs> the punk was real, yes. then. The punk was real. But I mean, for pe everyone who has not seen the movie... It's about a teenager who lives in this small town, and he's the son of a single mother, and uh, there's this creepy house right next door, you know, it's been abandoned for years and whatnot, and they've been trying to get the city to tear it down for eons, yeah. and suddenly a new neighbor moves in who's, like, fixing up the house and making it look really nice, sort of, mm. until they start painting the windows black. <laughs> Which... Stepping out of the realm and into the fantastical. If that yeah. had been me and Danny as kids, we would have like, been sitting knock, there knock, with knock. binoculars like, Hello, like, Hi, why are you are painting you? your finger, your windows black? <laughs> <laughs> are you a vampire? I mean... <laughs> it would have been very blatant. That would have been yeah. the first thing we asked. Are you, yeah. are you a vampire? <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> we would have been, you know, horrible for having a vampire next door. We either would have been dead or crossed. I mean, there's no in-between. For the vampire. Yeah. We would have driven that poor creature absolutely up the wall. <laughs> yeah. Like, have you eaten today? <laughs> Who did you eat? <laughs> did you have fun? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> What's that like? <laughs> Can you turn into a bat? <laughs> Can we see it? <laughs> Can I bring you to show and tell? <laughs> <laughs> that would have been Danny and I. Oh, in a heartbeat. Kids. But, you know, William Ragsdale does a great job as the teenager. And, you know, I can't go without mentioning how cool Stephen Jeffries is at playing Evil Ed. Yes. Evil Ed is the character in the movie that knows all about the vampires to a more extensive extent than even Charlie does. Because Evil Ed is like the super nerdy kid, whereas Charlie's, like, more of just a, the normal kid in school. Yeah. And whereas Evil Ed is, like, the outcast because he's so far into monsters, he's beyond the norm, which is what Tabby and I were. Well, uh, yeah. <laughs> but, you know, Stephen Jeffries did such an amazing job as Evil Ed because he, even though he was in his 20s at the time, he managed to pull off the fact that, okay, here's this kid who's really, really like, weird, mm -hmm. but he also really cares about his friends. Yes. And so it, it's a really, really... The, the juxtaposition between Williams Ragsdale and Stephen Jeffries was really great, and they had a lot of really good buddy chemistry on screen. They did. Um, and you need that in a film. You do. You absolutely... If you're missing that element... It, you know, it chemistry has bad. to be there. And then you add to the fact that, you know, and this is kind of a nerdy thing for Tabby and I, uh, the town we live in now, Chris Sarandon went to school here. Mm -hmm. And so for us, it was kind of cool that Chris Sarandon went to WVU and he's in this cool vampire movie. So, you know, and he really does a great job at being, you know, the suave... Yeah. Really, like, regal vampire. The vampire that, you know, kind of you see coming out of Transylvania that you think of, like, Dracula's very suave. Mm-hmm. And, you know, dressing stylish. But, well, the other thing that was cool is that he dressed stylish for the 80s. It wasn't that yes. he was in the traditional, like, Bela Lugosi garb. No, they no. made him in modern clothing but still maintained that regalness. Which kind of lent to... You know, that shift away in Hollywood from, well, we have the Bella Lugosi vampire to they're going to have to blend. Yeah. Which makes sense. Because yeah. if you have these creatures that live for, you know, millions of years, so to speak, technically they could live that long. Yeah. But, you know, hundreds and hundreds of years, they're going to have to evolve with the times and learn how to exist. Yeah. So, check it out. Yeah. If you haven't seen it, watch it. I know you can get the you can get anything on it. Like yeah, DVD, it's streaming, Blu-ray, Blu DVD. You can get any anything of it. you want. It's available, 
and uh, you know, in, of course, there's clips online all over the place, and so on and so forth. It's just, it's just a really fun, great, entertaining movie. So if you're looking for a movie to spend an evening with after you've had a really crappy day, that's a good one. That's there's a good tons one. of. It's basically a horror comedy, so there's a lot to laugh at and a lot to have fun with. If you're like me, curl up with some mac and cheese. Yeah, you know. Check it out. Tell us what you like, what you don't like about Fright Night. And until next time. Bye.